we want to add into our design portfolio, if you will, this concept of composition. Um, often you'll hear about inheritance versus composition in the design world, if you're going to go off and read some literature on that. And so the idea is inheritance is a really great way to share behavior and to share data. But it's not the only way. I can basically, without any additional code, I can just say, I want to extend that thing over there. I get all the stuff immediately. But sometimes that relationship doesn't map, match up exactly right. Oh, sure, I want to swim, but I don't want to be a submarine because submarine happens to be the class I built that in. It's too much data for me to share. So you have to understand that sometimes your first cut at code isn't the right cut of code, even if that code has been released already. Sometimes your requirements change that means you want to shift stuff around. I want to be part of what that does, but not all of what that does. And so that's where this concept of composition comes in. It's basically saying, I want to get some behavior, but I don't want to have to recreate the behavior myself. So I'm going to get a helper to do that behavior. So you could say like, hey, I really, really am good at writing code, but I hate doing discussion boards, so I'm going to have my wife type those up for me. I'll tell her what to say, but I'm going to type her up for me. I'm doing most of the work. I'm just getting some help right there. Um, yeah, that questionable, maybe. I mean, actually, um, in, in, in academic research, they would say, as long as there's attribution, you say what people are doing and how they're contributing, then that's just perfectly okay. Um, so, in code, it's perfectly, perfectly okay. You are glad to basically create classes that contain shared code and instead of inheriting from that class I just pass along delegate this is going to be the phrase we're going to use work to that class and wire it into the code myself I, I don't get it all in one statement just extends but I get it from there so think of this as an example um, I have a car and a boat and I want to get a navigation system that could work on both of them. Now, I could pay an extra thousand bucks for the navigation system on my boat that's built in. I could pay an extra thousand bucks for the navigation system on my car that's built in. And then $2,000 later, I can go navigate on either one of them. But if either one of them breaks, it's useless to the other one. I can't go take my boat and slap it on top of my car or vice versa. So what if I could just create a dashboard one? You know, Just instead of having it be built in, what if I want to create... You know, the handheld GPS that we, you know, that we see so commonly these days or you know, have on the phone or whatnot this, these days as well. Um, that would be a great idea, right? I can go take that and go separate that out. So there's some illities that we want to talk about here. We need to decide, do we need our code to be extensible or replaceable or both? Um, sometimes they work together. Sometimes they, they work at odds. So... If I have some feature that I want to allow you to expand upon it, then you're adding new features, modifying existing features, basically putting new context inside of there, then inheritance is really good at that. It gives you the base functionality, and it gives you the rules by which I can extend stuff out. So if the most important thing in your design is I need to be able to add on new capabilities to this later on, then extensibility is the way to go. So if I want to, for instance, in my GPS example, I want to be able to tie in the GPS to other features of my boat. Like maybe um, I'm tracking where I'm at, and then by then I can look at terrain, and I have that big thing that sticks out underneath my boat if I'm a sailboat. I don't, I don't know sailboats. I know powerboats. I can have that an automatic winch pull that up a little bit so I don't scrape it across the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the ocean as I'm, as I'm sailing around. I, that, that could be an extension of that feature. That's where extendability comes in. That's where inheritance comes in really nicely. But when replaceability is more important, I want to be able to swap that out. Then composition and interfaces work better here. So I have a good set of functionality, and I have a lot of people who could provide that functionality. I don't want to be stuck with that functionality from one place forever. I want to be able to be able to pick whichever one's best. So define a, a, a contract inside of there and allow me to switch it out as it goes. So how do I know which one I want to do? Well, if I'm looking for black box behavior, I'm using finger quotes here, um, this quote's up there as well, where I don't care how I get the data, I just care that I get the feature and functionality and information I want, and I can easily get that feature and functionality without having to go through a bunch of customization and bust of, uh, of sharing of information, and I'm willing to delegate that work off to somebody else, then I can ignore the details and 
don't need to customize the behavior, then composition works really, really well. On the inheritance side, the first immediate question is, are you really an instance of one of these things? If you created a hierarchy, could, would you naturally group these things together, or is it just being done for convenience? Am I extending out the submarine class with the whale class? Because there's a functionality there. That's a bad reason. Um, you're not, a whale is not a submarine. It never will be. Um, the other question said there's, do I need to group objects? Uh, is there some way I want to put things together and then have this real tight tie inside of there? So again, if I need to know when I integrate my GPS to my car, I need to know how big the tires are, what the RPMs are, uh, you know, what the 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 digital uh, um, compass is saying. Uh, so I need to know a lot of detailed features, then maybe inheritance is more appropriate right there. So there's not necessarily one always above the other. It's just the question of what's more important here. So if you remember back to that sensor monitor program we did before, we had built an inheritance-based solution where we had a bunch of subclasses that went off and realized this. So here's an example of an all-composition-based comp solution for that. We would create a sensor interface. We would create a monitor interface. And then we would create subclasses or I implementations of that that realize the behavior. So now notice we have a thermometer and a smoke detector. The classes fundamentally are the same. The relationships are what's changing here. So the difference here is for the smoke detector, for the thermometer, I have to provide all of the data. So I also wanted to show you a little bit of variation in UML inside of here. The smoke detector shows you all the data. The thermometer shows you some of the data. It, 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 both of these are valid UML. I don't have to show you every field all the time, particularly private ones. I can choose to. The methods, I'm not showing any of the methods in the smoke detector because it's assumed I have those methods because I implemented that interface. Thermometer, I'm showing you a bunch of the methods. I don't think I'm showing you. I might be showing you them all. Nope, I'm not showing you them all because it's not reset or query state inside there. But I'm showing you a bunch of the methods that I'm providing implementations for. The point being is all of the work has to be done in smoke detector. All of the work has to be done in thermometer. It has to be copied over. I have to have this different list inside of that. I don't get any of that for free. Fire alarm similarly implements the monitor interface. And it has to keep track of these other guys its, its own. That's, that's no big deal. Where composition really fits into this picture, though, is in this sensor data class. So the sensor data class is this compromise between being an interface versus being inheritance. So I could copy and paste all the code between smoke detector and thermometer, between thermometer and um, whatever a light meter is called, a luminosity defector, whatever it would be. Um, I could go copy all of that into the, the humidity sensor. Or I can go create a class that implements pretty much all of what the interface asks for. So get model number, sensor ID, password, location code, power mode, battery level, all of those things are attributes of sensor data. And so when I call thermometer.getPassword, it goes and calls sensor data.getPassword. It passes it through, and this is what composition means. I have a class that essentially implements the interface, and then the rest of that just delegates off the work and, and holds it someplace else. So if I want to tr trade sensor data, I don't have to get each one of these individually. I can go get the whole thing of sensor data. Or I can get them individually, or I can sh share behavior inside of them as well. All of those are options within the composition-based solution. So this approach does not save me coding time. It saves me flexibility. It, it, it enables me flexibility. So the pros of this is I can only focus on the shared behavior. I create an object, and I delegate to that object, and I let that object handle the data and behavior that's shared. I require no base class. It's real simple and easy. I don't have to tie into everything else. The downside is I have to accommodate for everything. I have to provide methods for each and every one of those guys. I have to provide data storage for each one of those guys. I'm not taking advantage of polymorphism within that. If I, if I forget to do something properly, it's up to me. So... The other option we can talk about in design, just to be holistic, is one of them is I can have super classes and I can inherit everything. The other is I can have um, individual classes and delegate things. I want to point out that in some cases, neither of those is appropriate. 
what I truly have is an abstraction of data. I have metadata inside of there. And this is what we were talking about with objects versus hierarchies. Let's say for the sensors, because this doesn't apply to the monitors at all. For the sensors, I don't really necessarily need anything different between the different types of sensors. Whether I'm a temperature sensor or a uh, smoke alarm or whatever, I say, get me data, and you return back to me a number, which is the data. It's up to me to determine what that would be anyway. At this point, I can create a series of objects to handle that. So I can have one class, sensor, and it has all the values inside of there. It stores the values inside of there, and I can say query state, and it's going to get me one of those values. It's going to get me the value that's, that's going on with that. Maybe it returns a string, maybe it returns a number. It's, 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 it's all basically just data inside of it. And so then I can send commands. Here's the command name, here's the parameters. You know, I can do that all abstractly as well. This could be a perfectly viable implementation because what this gets me is I can create a sensor without writing new code. I can configure a new sensor. I can throw a line in the database and load it up, and then I have a new type of sensor. So I want to add in a sensor that you know, tracks how many different colors are in a room. Well, boom, I can just add that in and say, go get color count, and it returns me back a number that says color count. So it works well if there's a lot of different sensors in this case, and the behavior is very simple as sensors. I don't have customized behavior. It's just different ways of storing data. The con of that is it increases the complexity. Now I'm coding abstractly, something I don't get to see in code. I can only see at runtime when the data gets loaded up. Um, I have to really use the debugger heavily to be able to figure out what's going on with this, where the data is coming from, where it's going to. And so it's not a good choice when there's a lot of dynamic behavior um, and there's not a lot of data. But then if, there's, if it's mostly data and this common behavior, then this is a really excellent choice. So how does this fit into the code? Well, we're not going to use this in code. This is a bigger picture. Right now, this week, we're talking about concepts. Uh, we have a very simple couple new language elements we're throwing in, the word interface, the word inherits, and things like that. But there's deep ramifications for design inside of this. And so I want you to see those questions. I want you to think about those questions as you go build more complicated systems. And more importantly, look at how interfaces are used. Look at how uh, abstract classes are used as you go get into more advanced Java concepts when we move forward. Again, JDBC is huge. Uh, when we get into graphics and, and at the end, we're going to see a lot of inheritance uh, stuff. When you get into GUIs, you're going to see a lot of inheritance stuff uh, into the next class. And so pay attention to how those work and then think about how you can leverage those in your designs going forward.